Hi everyone, my name is uh, Lou Barlow. Um, I have a song that I'd like to play for you. I wrote this song in Washington, D.C. I believe it was 1991. I'm going to tell a story about the song. I always tell this story when I play this song. Um, but it's relevant for this because it directly involves some of the, um, uh, the parents of black the black cat, the people that brought the black cat into existence. So it was 1991 and uh, I was dating Catherine. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we had uh, we'd been together for maybe a month or so. We'd spent some time up in Western Massachusetts, which is where, where we both are from. Um, and I went down to D.C. to visit her, and I took the train down, and uh, she was working as a congressional page for our congressman, John Olver. And uh, so I was, you know, anxious to see her. We had, um, we'd had a really sweet time together up in uh, Massachusetts. We were both in transition. I was, I had left a, I had been in Boston, and I had just moved back to my parents' house, and uh, she was just embarking on her, you know, her career path and moving down to D.C., uh, you know, to help make the world a better place. And um, I was just kind of a stoner <laughs> musician. My band Sebado had, you know, we were doing good, but we hadn't quite, you know, I hadn't really gained that much momentum yet. I was a little lost. Uh, so when I went down to D.C., um, I had nothing to do other than visit with Catherine. And when I arrived there, I walked into her apartment and she was standing next to this very strong looking person who was wearing a black leather jacket, black jeans, and he had spiky black hair. And uh, he was introduced to me as Dante. And I realized who he was. I realized that he was uh, the drummer for Iron Cross, which were I was a huge uh, DC hardcore fan, and Iron Cross were, uh, <laughs> they were on the Flex Your Head compilation, I believe, and they had a seven inch. And not only that, but uh, Dante was in a band called Grey Matter, who had a couple of songs that I absolutely loved. And uh, so I was like, whoa, it's Dante, you know? <laughs> Dante the drummer. And um, uh, apparently, uh, he and Catherine had just gotten back from a motorcycle ride. So he had Catherine on the back of his motorcycle, and they had gone down to the down to the ocean and sat on some rocks or something. So I'm sort of I'm meeting Dante and seeing Catherine for the first time, and I'm like, "Whoa, you know?" And she, uh, "This is my friend Dante," <laughs> and uh, I mean, it was totally cool. Dante was totally cool. Catherine and I just like you know we picked up where we left off, um, you know, and I stayed there for the next week, um, kind of just sort of bumming around DC. I didn't have a lot to do. And uh, and in the meantime, Catherine was uh, introducing me to all these kind of incredible people because DC really is a place where people do think about change and people do work towards that. So she had introduced me to a lot of people that were, were working in the community and Dante had, uh, he had, you know, I believe his father ran, uh, you know, a very successful uh, food co-op, and Dante clearly had ambitions of, of his own. And I would say that the black cat at that point was kind of a sparkle in his eye, you know, or you know, twinkle in his eye, and uh, idea that they had. And I think maybe I'd even heard a bit about that. So um, I was a bit intimidated. I mean, not just by Dante, but by DC, you know, and by these. Uh, So I was spending a lot of time just kind of bumming around D.C. while Catherine worked. Sometimes I would go and visit her for lunch, or at least once anyway. I, came, I went and visited her for, for lunch when she was working in Congress, and I got to walk down the hallowed halls of Congress, and um, that was pretty exciting. But in general, I didn't do much. Um, until one day I was talking to Catherine, like, you know, and she said, well, why don't you write a song? And I didn't bring my guitar with me down to, see, down to D.C., but um, 
there was a six-string guitar there, so I started to write a song while she was at work. And on the last, uh, the last night I was there, um, we were in her apartment, and there was a woman who had lived downstairs from her who was there as well in the apartment. And um, Catherine said, you know, what about this song? You know, did you finish it? And I said, yeah, I did. And, you know, she said, well, why don't you play it for me? And I hadn't really done anything quite like that before. I'd written songs, you know, um, but I rarely did I sit down face to face with someone and play them. I mean, my songs um, then and now um, are maybe, you know, I, they're pretty personal and it's not the not the easiest thing for me to do to have that sort of it's it's now that I've I've played for years now obviously and I'm a um I'm a uh, solo performer <laughs> and uh I've sort of more or less embraced you know being a, almost like a folk musician or something like that but back then um you know I was still kind of like just kind of a in my punk rock, my punk rock period, my punk rock days, my um, post-hardcore days. So something like that was not uh, typical for me. And the prospect of it made me very nervous. But we, I did sit down and then, you know, she sat with this woman who lived downstairs from her. They sat very close to me. And I performed this song that I had written for Catherine. And, um, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, the next morning, um, I left, you know, um, she, she went to work and while I was sort of lying in her bed and sort of sleeping, um, the door opened up and her roommate, she had a roommate, this very, really funny roommate, and she came into the room and planted a huge kiss on my cheek. I think thinking that I was sleeping and she whispered in my ear, I really like you, Lou. And then she walked out, which was sort of this perfect end to my very interesting, you know, inspiring um, visit to DC back in 1991. And, uh, as the story goes, um, Catherine and Dante got together pretty soon after that, which was totally cool. And I, you know, I, you know, the writing was on the wall. <laughs> and, you know, I was, I happily returned to my, my old life. Um, and, uh, you know, everything worked out. <laughs> And I, I do really like to, when I reflect on that time, I like to think that um, that by being there, you know, in, the, in those early days of uh, Catherine and Dante's, you know, relationship, friendship, you know, that um, maybe I set a little fire <laughs> and sort of, uh, you know, and the passion that was there was was kindled and and of course they went on to do great things together um, one of which is the black cat but this is the song I played for Catherine could I hold on should I hold on to you? Ask, I'll tell the truth There's nothing I should hide And if I move too slow And you're bored, I need to know I'm weak to hide inside To force what I don't feel And if all we have 
is a question There's no hope to find a future But something in me cries for you It feels too real this time I think I love you Though I don't know what that means The girl of my dreams Or a friend one day leaves And could we trust this? When I lied to myself before And I knew it all again To taste what I've imagined we could be Look what we've become This pressure that we feel And in a world of possibility This may not prove real And could we give enough Back against a wall Too close to breathe But too far to fall Was to feel you closer to me And it's sad to feel this resistance What once before it felt so free Let tomorrow be I can't be so impatient I'm pushing every answer When there isn't any question That we feel good now And though this may have to end I hope I'm always with you I'm honestly your friend I think I love you